children are not managing well. And the only person leaving the house really was T because he was an essential worker. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you, yeah, yeah. but you weren't living here yet? Mm-mm. No. Right. We anyway. moved here in 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Towards the end. Yeah. October. But it was mind boggling to me. And I talked to a friend of mine who is a parenting expert. And she said, what I would do is I would be like, you know what? School's out. Mm. Because these children aren't learning anything. Mm -mm. They're stressed out Mm -hmm. because they don't understand what's going on in the world. You're stressed out because you're trying to make it normal and it's not normal. No. You know, and so the burnout became so overwhelming that I actually was like, well. Yep. Well, uh, Anne says it's time to call school to an end. Uh, My friend Anne Brown, who is a parenting expert, she teaches parenting classes. And then I kept hearing all of these experts go, if your children don't want to do their homework, then don't make them. Then don't make them. Because this is not a situation that is normal to them. No. Your children are on a limited time frame on the computer, so you're fighting to get them to have their half hour or their hour and whatever. And all they have to do is be on a screen or whatever. This is not the time to hold their feet to the fire over this particular thing. No. This is a limit that, yes, it's a healthy limit, but right now... The world is upside down. Yeah, girl. Let it go. Yeah. And that's what I did. I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. we're good. You know what? You do school. You don't do school. I went to Costco. I bought workbooks for the kids. I was like, do these. Work on these. Don't work on these. I don't care. Yep. I am, you know, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not grading you. Your teachers aren't grading you either because I told the teachers, I was like, here's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I got them these books. I said, but frankly, uh, all y'all are underpaid, Mm -hmm. which y'all know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't do your job. I don't want to do your job. And I pray to God you can come back and do your job soon and that you get a raise. But yeah, I was so burnt out that most days I could barely get out of my chair. Mm -hmm. Because I was just like, I just want to sit here with my head down and wait for it all to pass. Yep. I got it. I I mean, you. I work in a very customer, a front customer facing job, and luckily, uh, part of my store would be closed, so we would only have like drive through going. But still, dealing with the people, and we were busier than we ever were. So 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 busy, busier than the pandemic before the pandemic, because we were the, one of the only fucking things open. So what, what do people do to get out of their house? Come to my store, right? Get coffee. Get coffee, girl. And people. I remember even before our like the lobby shut down, people telling us like, "Oh, you're all overreacting. Like it's not a big deal. It'll pass." Blah blah blah, and then saying shit to us like, um, "Oh, just watch. After the presidential election, this will all be gone." And I said, "How dumb? How fucking dumb are you? You think that the whole entire world just shut down for American politics? Like you're dumb." Um, and I know who you voted for, but my point is. Um, we just got, we were already dealing with it. We already had to work. Our store was chaotic. Um, everything was chaotic. Um, and on top of like the first year of the pandemic, we had wildfires that we still had oh, yeah. to work in. You know what I mean? It was like X, Y, and Z. People were leaving. People, I had multiple employees who went into like psychiatric lockdown because it was too much. And trying to maintain life outside of work while dealing with like, you know, the entitled people who come to Starbucks daily. Yeah. It was exhausting. And then to have the company not... They... I'm sorry, but if I can't have my $5 coffee... Right. Well, and then... Oh, uh, you've ruined my life. Exactly. Everything was on delay. They couldn't send us, like, half the product we needed. They couldn't send us, like, the food or whatever we needed because production slowed down because yeah. people were dying. You know what I mean? People were dying. Well, that was selfish of them. I know. I don't know why they just didn't take some vitamin C. But they were dying. Um, every... You know, they had to stay home. Everyone had to isolate. And so it's chaotic. And so Starbucks did do great things, but... It was awful, and pe- there's a huge movement right now, and people are banding together for Starbucks to make changes, and whether that has to go through a third party, I'm not going to talk about it, but you know what I mean. Yes. Um, if they're going to have to you know, make changes, because people have left in mass. I can tell you, and I don't know if this is like private, who cares, um, information that like a lot of stores have had 90% plus um, turnover rate, meaning 90% of their staff has left within the year. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever worked a job like 
a Starbucks job or a front facing job, but it's a, it's a lot. Like it's, I wouldn't say that. And I know we've had this conversation. It's not necessarily hard. Um, it's a lot though. It's a, it's a lot to do. You know what I mean? You have to multitask. You have a lot. People could be yelling at you. People could be talking in your ear while talking in your face. A million timers are going off. You need to do a million things at once. Um, people aren't showing up for work. People are calling out, you know what I mean? Like different Mm. things are happening and it's a lot. And so when you're already struggling with what's happening in the world, and if you have any sort of empathy, what's happening with laws and how the climate is changing so dramatically, um, it's a lot, it's a ton, you know? Um, so I don't know. I just think that I'm glad that there's so many changes happening within the workforce like that. And I'm glad people are saying, fuck you, like enough is enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. just choosing to find being self-employed or find something else to do that is like makes them feel better. And changing a lot of people are changing like their majors, people are changing their careers because like who wants to work for just a boring ass corporation anymore? Oh, who no. wants to give them more goddamn money? Nobody. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was talking to one of my friends the other day who has been working in the same uh, law office for 32 years. Wow. Uh, and he's minutes away, literally, from being able to retire. Mm-hmm. But he said in the last six months, the new management mm-hmm. is so garbage that he's like, I'm probably, if it doesn't change, at 59 and a half, which mm-hmm. is like in the fall, uh, I'm going to retire. Yeah. Because I can. And why on earth should I put up with idiots who are not doing what they're supposed to do to run a company? Yeah. And obvi- and all, more often than not, it's the people running the company who are completely out of touch hmm. with the people who work for them. Yes. And the, <clears throat> uh, the way that things happen. And, you know, you've been working at a company long enough. You know how things should flow. Mm. And you get in new people running the place who are either fresh out of college yeah. or they're big corporate, whatever. Whatever it is, they know how it should run on the books or how they learn, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. that's not reality. No. And that's it's so funny because there are many times, again, working... You know, I've, I've worked at H&M. I've worked at Starbucks. I've worked for small businesses. Anytime for a, a company like an H&M or a Starbucks, when you get somebody who gets hired as assistant manager, manager, a district manager above you. Um, and so they know theoretically, oh, I've read the book. But you've never ran a floor. You've never right. held keys. You've never right. held a timer. You've never dealt with an So reading customer. the book is, is cute. That gives you an idea. Mm-hmm. It should give you a basis of what to go from. Yeah, but you have no idea what a you're doing. A jumping off point, maybe? Exactly. Yeah. And I deal with this often because we have a very successful store and a very successful store manager. And so we do a lot of training. Um, but many times there have been assistant managers or new DMs who've come in and I'm like, I know more than you. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not me trying to be a bitch, but don't, first of all, don't tell me to calm down. <laughs> don't tell me what, that you know better than I do because you genuinely don't. Like, often I've, I've worked for this one company for, you know, like eight years total, you know? Yeah. And so I know a little bit more than you. And I'm not, I, if you would just let me help you opposed to being like an asshole to me or acting like you're superior because your title is higher than mine. But baby bop piss me off and you're going to piss the staff off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, who do you think protects them? Moi. You when know what I'm I was uh, working out in the out in another world that wasn't hairdressing, mm-hmm. my last job I did before I went to beauty school, I worked in a factory, which I know I've talked about before. It was the hell on earth. It was the worst thing ever. Oh, I thought. Um, it really was. It was god awful. But I remember at one point, one of the old ladies that I worked with who had been there for two, three hundred years, mm-hmm. uh, she was what, and this was when you could still smoke at work. Okay. She literally would be working over her machine, cigarette hanging out of her mouth. But she could do everything in that area of without even hardly thinking about it mm. because she'd been doing it so long. Sure. Yeah. Well, and so when a job came up to be in a higher position than what she was in to be in management, she of course applied for it. And yeah. I remember her coming back and saying, "Well, of course they hired some kid right out of college who's never worked in a factory, who doesn't have a clue." what we do here. Mm. But they have a degree. Yeah. So, and she's like, I could run this place with my eyes closed because I've been here forever. Yeah. You know, and this kid is not going to have a clue. They're also not going to have a clue about how to really work with people. No. No. So, bring them in as whatever to train them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Great. Yep. But, no, I'm sorry. Take your people who know what they're doing. Yep. And promote them. 
be like, well, yep. I've already trained you to do everything. Exactly. You know everything. You've done everything in real life. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, we don't need to hire. I mean, and sometimes, here's the thing. Growth of a company makes sense to outsource knowledge that, like, these people who get hired outside of a company bring in knowledge they have from other companies. Yeah. I get that. But you don't need to bring that down to a store level because store levels have operations, right? Like, we operate a way that corporate has sent down. You bring in people who don't know what the fuck they're doing or what they're talking about and they think they know better, it just turns into a clusterfuck. And then we get reamed out for not having, like, the right numbers, making the right sales. You know what I mean? It's... It's more disruptive than companies think it is. Yeah. It's not fucking Absolutely. helpful. If you want their goddamn opinion about how they worked at Apple or Adidas or Nike, then ask them. Do you know what I mean? Don't bring them into my store. They're going to be disruptive, and that's about it. They're not helpful. That's right. all. Anyway. Right. It's true. It's how I feel. It's how you feel. And it's your good. feelings are that's so how I bad. Felt. Oh, my God. <laughs> and no one can tell you otherwise. Uh, I know, right? That's why I it's literally true. died. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, literally died. I know, right? It was so literally done. I've literally done with, like, kind of all of the things that we've been told we have to do our whole lives. Ooh. The things that were, like, well, you, because you are this, you have to be that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's just interesting. And, you know, I think, nor, I'm not going to do it, nor, you know oh what I mean? Oh, my God, did I just suddenly get someone on my pod who's from Australia? I know, you're welcome. Only oh sometimes. Oh, my God, that was so realistic. Only sometimes when I say nor. <laughs> It's funny, someone asked, I was watching the ticking talk, and someone asks, how do you say Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls, yes. the villain? And they're like, do you say more Jor Jor Jor? <laughs> and this girl's like, no, we fucking don't. And then she says, we say more Jor Jor Jor. <laughs> so you do say it. So yes. what I'm hearing is you do I say it. I was watching uh, my good friend, Iggy Azalea, oh, your, your good my friend. other good friend, Trixie Mattel's videos. Mm-hmm. And yes, obviously I'm kidding, I know none of these people. But well, Trixie good. thinks that, you know, she's some kind of linguist who can speak any I accent, fucking, which yeah. I love, because they're all kind of terrible. Yeah. Uh, and so she's speaking to her, honestly, her good friend, Iggy Azalea, mm-hmm. in her Australian accent when Iggy's like, nar. Nar. And she's like, but didn't that sound... Re- nar. Nar. <laughs> nar. I know. Iggy's Sorry, like, Trix. Oh, Iggy. Oh, Iggy. But I love that Trixie is at least aware enough to know that she's not yeah. Oh, yeah. a master of accents. But I do love, however... <laughs> Whenever she gets around, like if she goes back home, because she's from Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah, she totally comes back to do her with that Wisconsin accent, and she has to kind of fight to yeah. have that. It was like, I, okay, so this just makes me think again. Work if you've ever worked at a place that has a drive-through, there's always someone who takes an order, like, "Hey there, welcome to McDonald's. What can I get for you?" or whatever. Um, I used to work with this girl who I could not stand, and everyone knew I couldn't stand her. Uh, she was an annoying little conservative Christian bitch, and I wanted, I couldn't stand her. And she literally would be like, I have anxiety. But how did you feel about I her? I fucking hated her. But she'd be like, I have anxiety, I have depression, I have anxiety, I have so much anxiety. And I'm like, bitch, welcome, welcome to work. Welcome right. to the United States welcome of America. to the world. Right, exactly. Like, everybody does. Well, mine's worse. Okay, that's a big fucking assumption. But anyway... She would take orders, and she would speak in... She's a white girl. A white girl. And she'd be all, good day, mate. And, like, then speak in an Australian accent. And I'd be all... Or the, try. Try. And I'd be all, the fuck you doing? And she's like, oh, well, if I just speak in an accent, it just, like, really helps me focus on what I'm saying, and I don't get overwhelmed. And I'm like, cut it out. Like, don't. <laughs> Can you... <laughs> You're stupid. You're the dumbest person I've literally ever met. Hello. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, a total dweeb. And I'm like, I... <laughs> fucking can't deal with you and she knew she knew that I could, could not stand her because I'm like you're just being dumb and appropriative like could you just be ugly elsewhere yeah. what's uh, kind of funny to me about that is uh, doing my show and this is not really going to be a Tales from the Drag Closet because we pretty much run out of time but um, I beca- after my cousin went to the south and then spent the summer with us I have said y'all ever since mm-hmm. so in my shows when people would I'd be New people would say, oh, this is, I'm here for the first time. I would always say, where are y'all from? Mm-hmm. And I remember one night somebody was like, where are you from that you say y'all? And I was like, um, here. a little, Just a little southwest of here, but yeah. <laughs> still Portland. I mean, I grew up in Oregon, but I do say y'all on the yeah. regular. And I remember one night um, I was doing my show. And I, like I said, whenever I was addressing a group of people. I said, y'all, because there is no gender in y'all, mm-hmm. so it's wonderful. But I remember this young man came up to me and he goes, excuse me, ma'am, 
And I was like, I don't know who you are, but I already like you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't call me. And he, I don't like every that. sentence he finished with, ma'am. <laughs>